Hey everyone, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. I'm happy to be here with you this week and I've got a question that's been sent in by a woman named Sue. So she writes, Hi Susan, please talk about body dysmorphia. Do we all suffer from it to some degree? The person I see in photos is not the same person who looks back at me from the mirror. I used to be significantly larger in photos and now I'm significantly thinner. I've learned to trust photos more than the mirror. Does this ever get better? Thanks, Sue. Yeah, oh, body dysmorphia. That is such a good question, Sue. Um, so do we all suffer from it to some degree? Well, of course I have no way of knowing that <laughs> um, exactly, but my hunch is that um, we all do at least at certain times. So, I can think of three kinds of body dysmorphia. Um, one I encounter all the time, which is people that have gained weight gradually over time. And because of adaptation, which is a very powerful effect, you know, our, our eyes adapt to the level of illumination in the room, right? So we go into a dark movie theater on a sunny afternoon and our eyes adapt. We come out of the movie theater and our eyes have to adapt again. We always sort of adapt to the baseline of whatever's going on. Or if there's a repeated stimulus, we stop noticing it, right? You stop noticing the pressure against the back of your thighs when you're sitting in a chair for a long, long time. You adapt. And as we gain weight, we adapt. And so we kind of still look like ourselves, but we've sort of lost track of how big we've gotten. And then certain types of feedback can be a big shock. Like I remember I always, when I was at my biggest, I was always shocked when I would catch a glimpse of myself walking um, like in the mall, um, some of the storefronts would have glass that would reflect my image. And I'd be walking in the mall and I'd, I'd catch a glimpse of, of myself, but I'd think it was someone else at first, right? Like, because there's so many people in the mall and, and therefore the adaptation of my own perception of my own image didn't kick in. And I was also seeing my body from a different angle. And when I realized it was me, I was horrified and stunned. Like, I had no idea that I'd gotten that big. No idea at all. Um, I think photos can sometimes give people that shock if they catch, a, you know, like when people do their before pictures for the boot camp, sometimes they're stunned at what they look like. For me also, security cameras also did that. Like if I caught a glimpse of myself in a security camera, um, I still maintained a mental image of myself that's more like what I look now, look, what I look like now, um, even though I'd gotten big enough that I didn't look any, anywhere near what I look like now. So. I experience this with people because um, they'll come into Bright Line Eating and they'll think they have 40 pounds to lose and they have 80 pounds to lose. And they just don't see themselves as being 80 pounds overweight. Like they've just sort of, they know they have some weight to lose, but they have no idea realistically how much. And I think that some of that is a certain degree of body dysmorphism. I mean, a lot of it is actually with just people out there in the wild, like family members or work colleagues or whatever. And especially when I started this Bright Line Eating Venture, they would chit chat with me and like, oh yeah, I've got probably 20 pounds to lose. And you know, I just know because I've worked with so many people, they have way more than 20 pounds to lose, but they don't see themselves that way, right? So there's one kind of body dysmorphia is you're too big and you don't see yourself as being that big unless you get certain types of feedback that jolt you into the reality. A second kind of body dysmorphia, and this is the most dangerous kind is when you're too thin and you don't see it. So this is a big feature of anorexia, of course. Um, and um, with bright line eating, people can slide into it a little bit because uh, the weight loss is so intoxicating and addictive. Like it's so great to have the weight melting off. And for many folks, it's easy. Like, wow, I'm happy with this food plan. My weight is melting off. Let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. And suddenly they're too thin and they don't realize it. Um, if it goes into full blown anorexia, it's the most dangerous kind because, you know, anorexia is the most deadly, the most lethal um, of all of the mental disorders. So, um, you know, and, and in those cases, you know, I, I know every now and then we all see someone 
in real life walking down the street or wherever we are, they're walking in and they're just grotesquely thin, painfully thin, just, you know, um, I always close my eyes and say some prayers when I see someone like that. Just It just breaks my heart, right? They have no idea. They think they look great or whatever. Like I've coached people like that, that, you know, they think weighing 80 pounds is like, they're glamorously thin and it's it's horrifying. So that's another kind of body dysmorphia is folks who think they're too thin. We have someone in our tribe right now who's working on her anorexia and she's doing great. And she's come up with a, a mantra which is, I will not die for a number. I will not die for a number. And I just love that mantra. It's such a good one. So if anyone struggles with food restriction or, you know, needing to um, sort of cajole yourself to eat enough food to maintain a certain weight, try that on. I will not die for a number. Um, and then the last type of body dysmorphia, which I think is the one that you're referring to, Sue, is a mismatch. So it's, it's where, so for example, as you're losing weight, your body's getting thinner, but there's a lag time. <laughs> and your mental self-image doesn't update as fast as the weight pours off your body. And we see this all the time. This is actually um, the standard in Bright Line Eating and in any weight loss realm. Um, there's a, at least one published psychological paper on it that your mental self-concept does not update as fast as you lose weight. And it takes time. It just takes time. I don't know how much time in my experience, maybe a year or two, before you actually feel really and truly embodied in the size body that you are. So um, you'll notice it because things like um, a pair of pants that you're pulling up, you know, um, you know, when I first landed into a size four, I would get size four pants off the rack in the, in the department store and I'd start to pull them up and I'd be looking at the little opening of the hole of the top of the pants and I think, there's no way that these are pulling up over my body. Like, look at that tiny little hole. And then they'd pull up and they'd button. And I'd be like, it, it would just be such a mind warp. Like, I didn't know that I was in the size body that I was in. I just didn't know it. Um, and it took, um, you know, that no longer happens to me. It took a couple of years, maybe one or two years for that to happen. Um, so this is a, a very known, true, established thing that it takes a year or two for the self-concept to update in terms of your body size. But here's the thing. In my experience, it never updates perfectly. So once in a blue moon, I will still have the experience. This is actually more than once in a blue moon. I'll travel, so I'm, I'm without my bathroom scale, right? And I'm eating out in restaurants all the time and I'm not sure that my quantities are exactly right and I'm feeling bloated and I'm feeling heavy and I come home being convinced that my weight's gonna be whatever. You know, let's say five pounds above what it should be. I'm just sure of it. I can feel it. I'm blah, blah. And I step on the scale and my, it's just not true. Like the extra weight is not there, like maybe a pound. So those extra four pounds that I thought above that, they're not there. And because I'd been away from my bathroom scale and, and because i have been eating without my digital food scale for so long, my brain had convinced me that I was gaining weight steadily when I wasn't. And my sense of my body was that it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger when it wasn't. And I experienced that all the time. I know tons of other people in Bright Line Eating experience that all the time. And so at least some degree of body dysmorphia seems to be, we seem to always be susceptible to it. Um, my hunch, Sue, is that there are people out there in the wild, in the world, <laughs> Um, who don't have any body dysmorphia. Like they feel like they're this size and they are this size. Like that's my hunch is that there are plenty of people who don't have it. Um, in the Bright Line Eating community, those of us who are susceptible to food issues and weight issues, um, I think we're more likely to have it. And there are these different forms of, uh, of it that we're susceptible to at different times in our journey. So I hope that, oh, and, and I hope I've made it clear you, you asked, does this get better? Does this go away? You know, the answer is yes, it will get better. It will get a lot better. Um, but 
in my experience, are always sort of susceptible to it around the edges. So anyway, I hope that helps, Sue. Thanks for the awesome topic. And that was the weekly vlog. I love you bunches, and I'll see you next week.